High Bikes or Mountain Range has seen quite the update, taking a long, slack and low way of thinking quite seriously. This model is the High Bike All Mountain 2 and it's the cheapest bike in the range and it marries a fantastic asking price with assorted geometry. However, it's not quite without its quirks. Okay, so the biggest change that this bike has seen when compared to the previous iteration is in its geometry. So this bike now gets a 75 degree head seat tube angle, a 64.5 degree head tube angle, and on this large frame, it's a 475 mil reach, and those numbers are nothing to be sniffed at at all. Elsewhere, there's an aluminium frame, and this bike makes full use of a mullet wheel setup, so that's a 29 inch wheel at the front and a 650B wheel at the rear. And those wheels are built up of, I think, their high bike own hubs laced to WTB i30, ST i30 rim at the front and ST i35 at the rear. As for the rubber, and it's supplied by Maxxis, and there's a lovely DHF at the front in a 2.5 inch casing, and there is a 2.6 inch Maxxis Minion DHR. Then, as for the carcasses, these come in XO casings, and we'll get onto that a little bit later into the video. So, chucking a mullet wheel setup on this bike is a fantastic idea because not only does it negate the bike's weight a little bit when handling, but it also means that the wrist or the um, chainstay can be shrunk a little bit thanks to that little wheel. And then we can also put on fatter rubber, which will hopefully aid grip when climbing. And that shorter chainstay should liven up handling a little bit. And then the All Mountain 2 uses the Yamaha PWX3 motor, and that's mated to a 720 watt hour battery and the 1.7 inch LCD display at the handlebar. And this comes with seven modes to pick from. As for getting to the battery, it's an integrated battery. So all you need to do is remove this cover here with a little twisty thing, and then it comes with a key and then it just it drops out that way. This is great because it means that you could charge the battery off of the bike so you can leave it in the shed. Or it still comes with a charging port just here if you want to charge with the battery on the bike. Handy. So moving on to the suspension travel, there's 160 mil at both ends of the bike. The front is damped by RockShox Gold 35RL, where the rear gets a super, oh, RockShox Super Deluxe. For the money, you, you can't complain. Then slowing the whole bike down is a set of SRAM DB8 brakes, and they're mated to 203mm rotors. And as for the shifting, it's SRAM NX, so you get a full 12-speed Eagle shifting. It's cheap, but it works rather well. And moving back onto the frame, and its cables are completely internally rooted, so they come in through the down tube, and they pop out wherever they need to around the brakes. There's a stealth dropper. But what's really interesting is that the bike uses High Bike's modular rail system instead of uh, bottle mounts. This is, or this allows the user to fit whatever kind of accessory they want, whether that's like extra battery or a, a, like a top-up battery, a bottle cage or you know a frame bag and things like that and it all comes out to market and even like Fidlock make their own amount of work with this system. It is pretty cool because it means you can do whatever you want but you have to buy these extra mounts um, so if you are upgrading to this frame you know that's a bit of a downside. And then let's talk about the weight so this bike as a whole weighs a full 27 kilos and let's be honest that is pretty heavy even for an e-bike and unfortunately that does translate onto the trails. As it is a little bit chunky in the weight department, it's really noticeable when cornering, no matter how hard that little wheel tries to regain a bit of agility. So it just takes a lot of muscle to initiate the lean. So when you are um, changing direction very, very quickly, you, know, you are putting in a lot of work and it does take quite a bit of forethought. But there is a benefit. Um, so when you do lean the bike in, its weight makes it incredibly stable. And it holds its line really well. It then gains momentum really, really efficiently, thanks to that weight again. Um, so you are, it doesn't take much to get proper hauling. But in the corners is where the mullet bike kind of sets up really works because when paired with the weight, it slinks into its lean. So while it is hard to initially get there, it, once you've got a little bit of lean, it kind of encourages itself a little bit. Um, so some people will really like that. Um, but yeah, when trying to get it back up and then over to the other side, it does take a noticeable bit of effort. The small wheel helps in the steeps as well, as of course you've got a lot more space over the back end to shift your weight. Um, you'll be buzzing your bum a lot less and you just have a whole, you have just extra range of movement. And of course that 2.6 inch tyres contact patch is pretty big. Um, not only does it help absorb bumps, reduce the extra volume, but the contact patch um, just gives you tons of grip when climbing. And to be honest, I've never spun this rear 
wheel out unless I'm slipping on a route or something like that. It is very, very grippy. However, while grip is plentiful, the exo casings are a little bit of a questionable uh, addition, um, especially considering this bike's weight again. So even riding on the mellowest of trails, I have very easily um, pinch punctured this tire. Um, it's a bit of a shame, but again, this is something that I would upgrade very, very quickly. So while there are some niggles when it comes to the weight and the tire choicing, the bike's geometry is spot on. Um, again, it's an all mountain bike and it's just massively confident. That head angle shifts the front wheel out nice and far in front and the reach just gives you a really nice and stable planted area to move over. Um, the steep seat tube is awesome as well because you don't really need to do much to shift weight when climbing to keep all of that grip. Here, Hire Bike has done an awesome job in crafting an all mountain bike that is incredibly capable. So the Yamaha PWX3 motor really comes into its own when you're hitting the climbs. It has that 85 Newton meters of power, but it delivers it or with a lot of torque, it feels like. It feels a lot more powerful than you know the Bosch and Shimano equivalents. Um, what's great about it, it has those seven modes, so you can really fine tune um, the power delivery. And what I really appreciate about it is that the power delivery ramps up the Hardy pedal, so it's very similar to the Shimano EPH trail mode. Um, but that is in every mode on the bike. However, the motor does have a fair heft of drag built into it. Not that that was something that was meant to be built in, but when you're in lower three settings, you do feel as if you are working against the motor to or pedal forwards. Um, so that encourages you to go into the, uh, the higher power settings. But once you reach that, it really does sap this big battery's energy more so than on other bikes. So while the motor is rather powerful and actually it's reliable, I've not had any issue with it throughout my test period, it is, it does summon up some really weird noises most, um, especially when you're just about out cadencing the motor, it just starts to sound really crunchy and odd. And when it gets a bit wet and muddy, it's, yeah, more sounds happen then. But again, I've had no issues with it and it's actually quite enjoyed it. But I would say the, um, the display is rather plasticky and where I like to rest my thumbs in weird places, I have felt myself uh, press the buttons accidentally. Um, but again, this is, this is a small niggle. While expected for the money, and to be honest, it is rather good, um, the RockShox suspension here can find its, or its limits can be found fairly quickly when going downhill. Um, again, it's because this bike's so heavy, so the front is a little bit flexy. Um, it is an e-bike specific fork, but it just doesn't quite stack up to the fatter stanchion forks that we get on the higher models of these bikes. It does work and it works rather well, but yeah, it just feels a little bit overwhelmed when you're really pushing the bike a little bit. And that the same goes for the rear suspension. Um, but the rear suspension here can feel a little bit wallowy in the corners and it likes to hang about in its mid -strick. So all you need to do there is just chuck in some bottomless tokens. So we can't complain too much there. However, the biggest bonus of this bike is that it's completely modern in terms of standards. So if you did want to upgrade the fork, the shock, the tires, the seat post, the bars, anything on this bike, it can be done so very easily. So this makes the High Bike All Mountain 2 a really solid platform as a first e-bike. So if you do want to bung on a chunky Fox 38 or something like that, it can easily be done thanks to that tapered head tube and that will make the bike perform a lot better. And again, the first thing that I would upgrade on this bike is that rear tire. I would rather go for an Exo Plus or even a double down tire just to make damn sure that it's protected well against punctures. The brakes are something I'll upgrade a bit further down the line. I mean they are good, they do the job, but they're not the most powerful e-bike brakes on the market. It takes a bit of forethought to get used to and you know I've not felt too held back by them, but there are a lot of other brakes on the market that do a better job. Um, they'll also be a bit lighter. But if we move on to the value and beneath £5,000 is quite a hot market. So this bike is £4,800, but for £5,000, you can get the Canyon Spectral on CF7, and that comes with a full carbon fiber frame. So if you're looking to spend a little bit more, you know, that's a really good option. It also gets a bunch of cool tech where the battery is placed a little bit lower in the frame and the motor's tilted up. So that should make the bike feel a little bit more like a normal bike uh, when you're descending. So for £200 more, that bike is showing incredible value for money. Then for £100 more than this bike, there's a Trek Rail Gen 5 with a 624 watt hour, 625 watt hour battery. So that bike gets a lot of what we see here, but it gets the Bosch performance line motor. So if you're really looking to save the cash, the High Bike All Mountain 2 is a fantastic bike if you're dipping your toes into e-mountain bikes for the very first time. 
That's because it just has a sort of geometry that will please even the most experienced of riders. And what makes this an even better option is that it's fully ready for upgrades. So that is the full review of the High Bike All Mountain 2. And don't forget to like and subscribe if you'd like to see more reviews just like this for more e-bikes such as the Canyon Spectral On and the YT Decoy. Thanks very much for watching and we'll see you in the next one.